Hello and welcome back to the channel Hell Dominance. Anthony here. Please remember to like and subscribe and also click that notification bell if you enjoy what you see and if you want to see more. Coming up in this episode, Super League make a new announcement. Jake Connor is released from Hull FC. And Samoa count the costs after yesterday's opening game. We start today with that fallout from the England vs Samoa game as Samoa was near record 60 points to 6 World Cup capitulation to England has been compounded by three potential serious tournament injury, ending injuries including that dislocated hip that sent former Panther Tyrone made to the hospital. The biggest game in Samoan Rugby League's history turned into a real life horror show for the island nation as England ran riots with Victor Radley playing the pivotal role in the 10 try annihilation. Hopes, hopes have never been higher for Matt Parrish's Samoan side given the genuine NRL stars Junior Paolo, pa Josh Papalihi, Jerome Luai, Brian Toto and Joseph Suwali all adopting to represent their heritage over Australia. But but injuries to Hamiso Tabuai Fidal, Syndesmosis, uh, Braden Hamlin Ulele, who has calf trouble, and as well as May, as well as a likely suspension for playmaker Anthony Milford, only piled on top of an error riddled performance. May's dislocated hip stopped play for several minutes during the second half as he arrived in agony and was eventually stretched off. Parrish indicated afterwards that the 26-year-old had been hospitalised by the injury. May later posted on Instagram an update, stating hit back in, thanks for messages, road to recovery, now boys will bounce back, all of Oa. And morphine is good too, as well as showing that he was visited by Michael McAlorum at the Newcastle Hospital. Now that the hip's back in, it's ahead of what is a typically at least a three month recovery period for May to come. We have a few injured guys in there who I don't think will play any further part of the in the tournament, Harris said afterwards. Raiden is a calf and Tabuai Fidel is in a moon boot and crutches. So I would be surprised if either of those three would take part any further part. We have to be better than that today. Without a doubt, we are not using it as an excuse for anything like that. We didn't have a lot of luck injury wise, but we have to be a lot more re resilient than we are. Parrish denied his side were, had given up in the second half as England rattled up six tries in 16 minutes. We had a man in the simbin, a Sakuroa in the centre, one centre who was busted, so I definitely wouldn't say that. To say that the Samoan spine to England pre-game Civitao War Dads proved their most threatening offering of the afternoon with the 54 point slots only just falling short of their heaviest defeat in their history in the international arena, a 66 points to 10 thumping from Australia in 2000, it's a bit disingenuous. Parish pre-game insistence on Samoa's six NRL grand finalists and the six day preparations could see them undone for a tournament proving painfully accurate. They now find themselves on the quarter-final collision course with Pacific rivals Tonga, with intense scrutiny in store given the quality of the Samoan squad, and also Tonga's squad. England on the other hand, were all smiles as a uh, lovely crocodile's junior Radley claimed the Man of the Match award honours, and night swinger Dom Young scored an impressive first half double. Stepping away from the Rugby League World Cup for a moment and we see that the news of Bull FC have allowed Jake Connor to leave the club as they give him his release 
from his contract. From the statement released on their club website, Full FC have said the 27-year-old who lives in West Yorkshire will leave the club with immediate effect after close season surgery is completed. Connor has been given as given notable service to Hull FC over the last six years, having signed from Huddersfield Giants in 2017, including earning a Challenge Cup winner's medal in that year. However, the club believes it's in everyone's best interest to progress in a fresh direction for 2023. Everyone in, at Hull FC uh, would like to place on record our thanks to Jake for his performance on the field over the last six seasons and wish him and his family well for the future. The club intends to announce a new addition to the squad soon as plans for the new season continue to evolve. Reports from news uh, sources like Hull Live revealed last month that Connor and Hull were open to the possibility of a departure with both parties coming to an agreement. The move will end the six year stay with the Black and Whites where he made 142 appearances and scoring 41 tries. Connor's 2022 saw him top the list when it comes to try assists as he was responsible for 33 try assists during the season. The next best was Tuilala here of Huddersfield with 29, playing in the same sort of position. And to be fair, he has been involved in that for quite some years, that sort of stat for Huddersfield, progressing, uh, sorry, for Hull, progressing into the uh, player that he is today, Mr. Connor. So where to next for Jake Connor? Well, it didn't take long for the reveal to come about, as he signed for another Super League club quite quickly. And it was... A return to his old stomping ground as Huddersfield have taken the chance to sign Jake Connor back to the club for 2023. The deal is to join the club for on a three year contract as the 27 year old international fullback and standoff returns to his old time club after a stellar time on Hudders Humberside where he won a Challenge Cup and last season shot the assist charts, as we said. Jake Connor went on to say, I am absolutely buzzing to be coming back. Although it wasn't an easy decision, it's definitely the right one for me and my family. I feel like I've got some unfinished business at the club and I've got some old mates here that I can't wait to catch up with. I'm really looking forward to working under Ian Watson and Luke Robinson, who I know well. I've played against the insides on numerous occasions and they've always been well drilled. We've got a good squad and a good structure and I can't wait to be a part of it and enjoy my rugby. Giants head coach Ian Watson said I'd like to welcome Jake back to the Giants. He is a huge signing for us. Jake is a player I've admired from afar and is a tough competitor who wants to win at all costs and will drive people in the team to be better and want more. Last year we were the fourth best attacking side in Super League and hopefully adding Jake into the team can propel us to score even more points while maintaining our defensive mentality. This is a great moment for Huddersfield to get back one of our own players. And a lot of credit go, should go to Richard and Ken for working so hard to get this deal through. So just announced this morning from the Super League that something is returning in 2023. And it's Magic Weekend. On the back of a successful Rugby League World Cup 2021 opening fixture yesterday, Super League have confirmed that the 16th Magic Weekend will take place at St. James's Park, Newcastle on Saturday the 3rd and Sunday the 4th of June in 2023. Newcastle has become a favourite with Magic Weekend attendees and will host the event for a record 7th time. 
The opening game of the weekend will see Sulfur Red Devils versus OKR, and it is a repeat of the 2019 Magic fixture where the two sides faced off. The Anfield game was a close one with OKR winning by two point margin, and it promises to be another evenly fought contest in 2023. Wigan Warriors will take on the Catalans Dragons in the middle game of the de opening day. This will be the first time that these two sides meet at Magic. The Saturday then will conclude with the West Yorkshire Derby between Leeds Rhinos and Castleford Tigers. The times for each of those matches, the opening with 1.30 kickoff, the Greenwich Mean Time all these, 3.45 for the second game and 6pm for the third and final game. Sunday will also see three games as first of all newly promoted side Lee Centurions return to the Magic Weekend for their third appearance and open up things on Sunday when they take on Wakefield Trinity at 12.30pm. The reigning Betfred Super League champion St. Helens will play for the Field Giants at 2.45 for the second time at Magic. They met once before in the 2016 game when the Giants put in a dominant display to win 48 points to 20. The final game of the weekend sees Tony Smith's old FC side face one of his other old clubs. Warrington Wolves at 5pm to close out the entire weekend. Rodri Jones, Chief Commercial Officer at Super League said we are delighted to announce the return of Magic Weekend to Newcastle. The firm favourite for with fans and the date that players look forward to in the calendar. I'd also like to thank Sky Sports, Newcastle United and Newcastle City Council for their continued support of the event. With IMG coming in as the global partner and commercial usher of Rugby League to the world, it's said that Magic Weekend days are coming to an end, with a new structured calendar coming in 2025. But now we have Magic Weekend, and people should flock to the venue to support the entire event. Can we get it above 65,000, 67,000? For the two-day event or in the uh, for the games, don't know. But it'll be good to see. There are many, many facts. Uh, people speaking about these statistics about the World Cup opening game at St James's Park yesterday, because there is some people saying that there was more New North East fans. People from the North East go, went, who went to that game than have been to the stadium for a rugby league game than before. We need to cultivate that big city for more fans and hopefully grow Newcastle Thunder in the same process. If the two marry up, we could grow the sport in that area and we could see another powerhouse come out of it. It's going to take a lot of work, but we've seen that they're open to other sports due to this rugby league game being shown. I know it's international, I know it's international rugby league. 60 points to 6 victors over a team that was at some point rated better than us by all the bookies and people inside the sport, apart from the England team obviously is going to be a good stepping stone. We need to push it. We'll have to see how it goes next season. And I, for one, am looking forward to it. And that's it for another episode, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share this video worldwide, as well as clicking on that notification bell for any updates on new videos that may be coming very soon. Tell me what your thoughts are on today's episode in the comment section below. It's open for business. Please be uh, respectful in the comments, but also bring your points across as serious as you want. Anyway, tell me what your thoughts are on the episode as well, as we always look to improve. 
So, what are your thoughts on Jake Connor going back to Huddersfield? What are your thoughts on the Magic Weekend's return? And is it good to see? Isn't it good to see uh, Tyrone May being on the mend? Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Please remember to share, share, share this video worldwide. I will now wish you all the best. So please stay safe, and I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you.